Oh, no. Sure. Is it going to be... Okay. The lighting where, up to be where, where, Are you sure? Yeah. Tuck in your shirt. You're going to... Cameraman stand here. And well. we can stand over here in that way. Yeah. Hi, my name is Evan Salim. I am a senior here at Ithaca College. And we built in the machine shop here a uh, chaotic double pendulum, which we're going to be talking about today. What is that drawing? And this is a... This drawing is a computer model of... The, of the pendulum that we rendered before we built it, so we knew what it was going to look like. Oh, How does this work? Uh, um, <laughs> well, this is the um, uh, chaotic double pendulum. It's a system that has two um, identical pendulums lined up in tandem on the same axis, and they, each yeah. pendulum has a degree of freedom around the main axis, and then a degree of freedom around this lower axis here, and it demonstrates chaos because the, um, by by setting these two up, two things at identical angles, or what appears to be identical angles from our perspective, and letting them go, they start out the same, but then very quickly they start to do different things. Is that because there's a screw missing on this one? No. <laughs> No, I don't think so. Okay. So can you get not chaotic behavior out of the system? Also? Yeah, sure. If you start at low enough angles, the chaos comes from a, um, an exponential factor in the, uh, somehow, that somehow describes the energies of the system. And at a, at a low angle, the amount of energy in it is very, is small enough that they do roughly the same thing. One of these trip barracks is a little bit less friction than the other. So. They, they depart a little bit, but, but motion. Not as much. So yeah, the motion is Well, it's just departing and damping, too. It's right. Yeah. Right, but it, you know, again, at a higher angle, it does <laughs> drastically different things that we, could, that we wouldn't be able to attribute to just friction. about um, 70 degrees off of the uh, of the off the vertical axis for the initial the upper arm of the pendulum. So I, all all the simulations are in this was with the lower arm of the pendulum being hanging straight down. So about there, it's, it starts to have enough that it can make its make its way all the way over. And, and basically, it, it, before you start seeing chaos, these guys have to be able to flip around. And that critical angle is going to depend on the exact characteristics of the pendulum. Right. So if we you know, made one of these heavier and for some for some reason added some other weights or something to it, then it would probably change. Or the conditions. Right. And how do you know these are not coupled pendulums? Right. Oh, well, if I hold one still and let the other one go, I see there's very little motion in the uh, second pendulum can transfer from the first. Okay. This shows how um, the cha chaos comes from the very slight deviations in initial conditions, rather than ra some being it being some random behavior. What I've done is I've stepped the um, angle off by a uh, sixteenth of a degree at each for each condition, and you can see that as they're closer, they do tend to stick together a little bit longer, but very quickly they they bifurcate into some other pattern than than the one that's right next to it. And you know, by fifteen seconds you've got distinctly different behavior in any of the any of the pendula. So so what is this angle here? That's just the angle of the lower pendulum arm with respect to the vertical. So each um, I, d I described each of these um, objects that I've modeled the two separate masses that are the simplified version of the pendulum as being um, in some position relative to the length of each arm and these two respective angles. So 
M M two's location and velocity can be described in terms of this angle and that angle and these two lengths. And from that we can get the uh, position which gives us the potential energy or the